This is Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with Max and Jim Marbella. We're in Leeds here from Leeds Rumblehead of this Saturday night show of London Sky Sports with me. I've got Adam Smith. How are you, Adam? Hi, Coogan. Very well. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Good. Um, it's been a bit quiet at the boxing scene of late. This is kind of the last show uh, before there's sort of that traditional break and then uh, come September it's uh, full on. But yeah. um, the card this week is very much stacked. Um, headlined by Josh Warrington taking on Patrick Highland. It is. It's a sort of summer scissor, isn't it? A fantastic card. Probably the best card top to bottom we've had on Sky Sports this year in 2016. I think it, there's some tremendous matches. You know, where do you start? Obviously, it's fantastic to be back in Leeds with Josh Warrington. Uh, when, he, uh, when he won that Commonwealth title a few years ago, I said to Eddie, I, I'd really like to bring boxing back to Leeds. And I think he really wanted it as well. And Josh obviously sells a lot of tickets. We remember the days of Derek Roach and Carl Johansson and... It's, it's a great city, and, and I think that Josh really has appealed to everybody. He's, a, he's, he's like, a little bit like Ricky Hatton, isn't he? He's a man of the people. He's, he gets about, he's, he's feet on the ground, and he's got that sort of fervent support. It's terrific to see. So it's great to come back to any Josh Warrington fight. Good fight against Patrick Highland, um, who obviously is coming off that loss to Gary Russell, but is, is very decent. It's a real test for Warrington. So looking forward to that one. But every single fight sort of down the card is has got sort of plenty of spice and interest. Luke Campbell back in a, in a tough test. I'm really looking forward to Tyro Nurse and Tommy Coyle. And as for the heavyweights, you know, Dylan White and David Allen, who I don't think there's any love lost there. And, and there's a lot of pride on the line. It's a big opportunity for Allen, obviously. You know, we wait to see sort of how Dylan uh, goes forward, whether he can become a real sort of world elite fighter or, or not. And Dave Allen will have his, uh, his say in that. So that's great as well. You know, Gamalia Fai, Josh Whale, Brian Burnett on the bill. I, mean, I think it's really exciting. Mm. I mean, that featherweight division is definitely one of the strongest. Um, strong domestically, but very, very strong on the world scene. Uh, we saw uh, Oscar Valdez yeah. uh, become the new, new champion. Tremendous win, wasn't it? Yeah, last weekend. and. Um, Gary, obviously Gary Russell Jr. Uh, we've got Santa Cruz and, and Frampton this week. Can't wait for that. It, it's, you know, it's like a pick em and who's the best. Well, that's in that it. Ga now. Gary Russell Jr. didn't he? he? He did such a job on Patrick Highland, and I think that you know, on his best day, he's fantastic. I mean, Lomachenko decided to settle up at super featherweight now. I think you know, talent-wise, he's the best in and around that 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 weight class, the nine nine stone four boys, but. Lee Selby, let's not forget him. You know, we we were hoping to get Selby and Warrington made. I'm sure that will happen at some point, you know, further down the line. And a really interesting fight in Brooklyn this weekend between uh, Leo Santa Cruz and Carl Frampton, of course, goes up in weight. But he goes up in weight with so much talent and boxing ability and that unbeaten record. And Santa Cruz is, you know, full of sort of fire determination. He's a non-stop workaholic. I've, I've seen him so many times in the flesh and commentated on him. And I, and I think that he's a really, really dangerous fighter and a dangerous fight for Frampton. But I've got a funny feeling Carl might sneak a points win. I think it's a, it's a really big stage for him. And uh, I'm hoping, obviously, that he does. And then we've got some great you know, clashes to look forward to with the likes of Selby and, and, and Warrington. But Warrington's got a job to do here first. Obviously, Frampton's got one to do out there. Uh, we wait for Lee Selby's next move. And uh, yeah, exciting times in a nine stone division and a favorite division of mine as well, I think, back in the days with, with Barry and with Naz and Steve Robinson and so forth. I love the nine stone boys. So, uh, so yeah, very excited. A fight that's really caught the eye on this bill uh, at quite late notice as well. It was only made around th three weeks ago between uh, the heavyweights, Dillian White and, <laughs> and Dave Allen. Um, I think I was talking to Dillian White the other day and I said, you seem to have a, like, a rivalry with every <laughs> domestic uh, uh, British heavyweight out there. And but, probably um, you and me as well. Yeah, he? probably. <laughs> but um, like I said, he's sort of coming off the back of his defeat uh, back in December. He's had that one mm. win since then, but um, ideas, he's then. destined to be in another big fight and he can go on Dylan White. I mean, that, that defeat to Anthony Joshua is no way going to deter where his career lies. I think in many ways, you know, he, he came through that defeat with, uh, with his head held high, didn't he? I mean, yes, he was, he was stopped, but he gave Joshua plenty to think about in that second round. It was a great build-up. It had plenty of needle and spice and he seems to have created this image, doesn't he, as a sort of volatile, unpredictable heavyweight. And that's just another great character in what is a, a terrific mix with Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, David Hay back around. You've got David Price, you know, can he rebuild it? It's looking better for him as well. And then you've got David Allen, who's, who's unbeaten, you know. So it's, it's really good that two of these guys, two of the, the British top ten are getting together. 
you know, Alan, it's, it's short notice and it's a big step up for him, but he is undefeated. And I've heard really good things about his sparring with Fury and Joshua and so forth. And, you know, I know Dominic Ingle rates him very highly and, and I think he's been spending some time with Junior Witter. So there's a lot there that, that David Allen can, can, can bask on with experience. And, and I think he's, you know, he's got nothing to lose. Good chin, it looks like. I think he'll he'll be he'll be tough for Dylan, but you've got to expect Dylan to come through it if he's going to progress towards you know world level. But really, really interesting fight, and I don't think they're the best of friends. <laughs> we'll see you later on yeah. today. Um, obviously, a massive bombshell that was dropped uh, a few weeks ago uh, with the announcement of Golovkin versus Brook. Um, it, the way it was looking. We were expecting Eubank versus Golovkin. That didn't happen, and mm -hmm. within a very short space of time, yeah. uh, Eddie had moved very quickly uh, with Kel and Tom Lofer to to make this fight. Um, first of all, were you disappointed that the Eubank Golovkin fight didn't happen? <laughs> Interesting. I, I'm. I always look on the positive side, Coogan, and I think it was what's happened is a fantastic story. I think it's incredible that. Boxing does this, doesn't it? We were all surprised when Canelo and Khan got announced and, and there was a sort of, you know, a, a feverish response on social media to that. When I knew about the Brook fight, I, I thought that that would happen again and maybe even bigger as well because of the fact that everybody thought it was going to be Eubank Jr. and then suddenly the spin around, the different weights and all that, and in comes Kel Brook. And, and I knew... You know, I knew obviously before it was announced and we were keeping it very, very quiet because we wanted it to have that sort of same surprise, that same effect. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'd like to see Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, in a fight with Golovkin. Of course I would, as you would as well. I, I want to see him fight on the world stage. I think he's a great talent. I think what he showed against Tom Doran is that, you know, he's... He's obviously a British champion, but he's above that, isn't he? You know, he, he needs to be in these sort of big fights. But it didn't happen, you know, and what happens in, in these negotiations, you've got to move quickly. And I think with the, the Brook Vargas fight going through difficulties as well, I think suddenly Eddie thought, well, why not? You know, he called Kel up. Kel took two seconds to say yes. And then he called me up and he said, are you sitting down? And I said, no, I've had a long day. I'm not sitting down, I'm still on my feet. And he said, what do you think about this? And I said, I think it's fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing. Kells wanted a big fight for a long, long time. It is a big, big fight. And of course, he's a huge underdog. You know, Golovkin has wiped out everyone at middleweight. He's pound for pound, you know, f a fantastic puncher. He's, he's a terrific fighter, amateur pro. They look like there's no weaknesses. But, you know, Kel's unbeaten as well, and he's a very good fighter too. He may only be a very good fighter at the moment at welterweight, but he's a big guy. He's probably more a natural like middleweight. You know, so let's wait and see. I think it's very exciting. I think the, the best thing that I saw was when we went to the press conference in New York and the glisten in Kel Brook's eyes. You know, he wants this. He wants to test himself against the best, be it at, you know, at middleweight, whatever. He, he, and he's that hunger in him, and I think that's fantastic. It's a hard, hard ask. Let's let's get this straight. But I look at it two ways. We've got Gennady Golovkin, you know, the great Gennady Golovkin, coming over to London. I think that's a fantastic thing for fight fans, and I think it's amazing that someone like Kel Brook has got the guts to go in when he's a, a top, top welterweight and looking for those unification fights. Actually, to say no, they're not happening. I'm going to go for a bigger prize. I think it's magic. I think it's going to be some build-up and some night on September the 10th. Absolutely. Um, Adam, when you obviously we heard Eddie uh, speak about sort of the breakdown of the of the Eubank and, and Golovkin fight, um, when we're hearing stuff about. Chris Eubank Senior and reasons why this fight couldn't have taken place. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that from sort of your Sky uh, perspective? Well, listen, Chris Eubank Senior is very involved with with his his uh, son's career. Has been since since day one. I remember before he turned professional, he had this wonderful video made up of you know him and his son and, and, and the sort of you know where his son can go. The, the Eubank name is a huge attraction, isn't it? His son is a different character to him, but obviously there are similarities. Uh, and, you know, Chris Eubank Sr., one of my heroes, you know, when I was a teenager and, 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 and into university years, you know, Eubank was the one I really loved. You know, Nigel Benn was the great fighter, but Eubank for me was the, 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 the drama, the, the theatre. I loved him. I loved everything he brought to the ring. He was a great, great fighter. And I think his son can be a great fighter. I really rate him. Um, how great he can be, we don't know yet. Uh, but he's certainly got plenty of talent, and I'd like to see him develop. 
Um, I mean, a lot of people are saying, you know, is Chris Uvaxin here too close? Should he step back, allow his son to breathe a little bit? That's the way they're going about it. And that's, that's the way they're, they're carving their careers out. So, so good luck to them for that. I think that, um, as far as I'm concerned, I want to see Chris Eubank Jr. Uh, back in big fights as soon as possible. And I think there's no reason why he can't fight the winner of Golovkin Brook or, or go a slightly different route. But we want to see, you know, we loved having Eubank on, uh, on the anti-Joshua cards and against Spike O'Sullivan. Fantastic to work with him. And I really want to uh, be continuing that going forward. Um, obviously, we've got to deal with Eddie Hearn, so it's, it's a match on contract. And, you know, that's, that's who our, our partnership policy is on Sky. So I need Eddie and, and the Eubanks to sit down and work out whatever went wrong last time. And hopefully that, you know, we can smooth the waters and get Chris Eubank Jr. back on Sky. That's what I'd like to see. As far as senior goes, you, you've got to love him, haven't you? He's a, he's a real character in the game. Whether you agree with everything he does or not, you know, that's subjective. But he's, uh, he's fantastic to have around. And I'm sure he's a really good influence on his son, too. There's some stories this last couple of weeks about Amir Khan and Conor McGregor. Mm. Crazy or? Look, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not a big, as you know, I'm not a big MMA UFC fan, etc. I like what the UFC have done, how they've packaged stuff. Um, and how they brought this, their sport to, to an, an audience um, with the best fight and the best and the fighters' personalities coming out. I think there's a lot of things they've done right. It's not, it's not a sport for me. Uh, I'm a boxing purist. I think that all the talk of May with uh, Conor McGregor, I mean, look, you know, if he wants to come back and have a 50th fight and they want to make a ton of money and maybe it is a, a promotional vehicle to do that, you know, realistically, I, I wouldn't want to see it happening. I'd rather, if Mayweather did come back, it was against a, whoever, Danny Garcia or uh, somebody else, I, I, a Kel Brook, whoever, um, and I'm here gone. I'd like to see him against, you know, a, a proper professional fighter. Um, as far as Amir Khan, listen, it's, it's up to him how he wants to, to move forward after the Canelo defeat. I'd like to see him in with Kel Brook. I've made that very, very clear for the last couple of years. Um, there doesn't seem to be any movement towards that. But maybe if, if Kel puts on a really good display against Golovkin, win or lose, you know, and they can make that fight happen in the summer. That's the route I'd like Amir Khan to take. Um, he might want to fight Danny Garcia. <laughs> this talk of Conor McGregor, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's not for me, but it's his decision. Um, a week ago, we saw the end of an era at Sky Sports News. Uh, Jim. Jim what? Sad. Uh, he's been at Sky for yeah. 654 years. <laughs> 654 <laughs> years. And listen, he was at ITV yeah. for many years before. Jim Watt is uh, an absolute legend. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed working with him from start to finish. And uh, there were a few tears shed um, when he said that you know he, he wanted to move on. I mean, it's a, he goes out um, as as I said a, a, a legend. Um, I think he was a terrific fighter. I mean, he was a little bit before our time, you know, as a world champion. You know, but looking back on on uh, on the old footage and stuff, you see how how tough he was and, and what a what a good world champion he was for Scotland. But he wanted to retire and he wanted to become. Uh, a commentary on television. He was already doing some when he was still fighting. Um, and I mean, he just made that position. He made the co-commentary position his own. Almost he invented that role alongside Reg Guttridge. You know, he was with Dickie Davis in the studio. I remember him telling me stories about how if Dickie wanted 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds as a soundbite, he just used to tap Jim on the knee, you know, one or two taps or three taps, and Jim just used to bomb. He used to give that answer. Such a professional, so good at it, such a good uh, analyst. You know, when I was working alongside him, in, in when I started commentating, there could have been no better guy to help me through those early years because you just felt so comfortable with Jim. You know, he, he'd he been in the ring, he'd been at top level, he'd worked his way through a hard career. And then he just, you felt like you were in there with him, that he could guide you through. And when you were describing the action, he could say what it was really like to be in there. You know, he always said what he believed, you know, whether you, you, you agreed with that or not. You know, he was a straight shooter, a fantastic reader of a fight, a terrific scorer of a fight. and was involved in so many big fights through so many years with the likes of, of the Tyson Bow, Holyfield heavyweight era, and, and obviously, you know, through the, the, the great night, Ricky Hatton, Costas Fiano was, was, was one of his favorites. There were so many that, that he, he did. I remember commentating with him on Corrales Castillo 1, which was my favorite fight that we've ever had on Sky. 
uh, with that amazing 10th round and you know Jim and I standing up with microphones in our hand but really for me the professionalism uh, each and every time he wanted him to do something he was there he was there with enthusiasm with passion and also off camera he's such a great guy as well a raconteur a, a terrific sort of companion too and, and I will miss him hugely you know he's um, He's, he's got his beloved wife, Mags, as we all know, he's had a, a, a very, very difficult personal situation to deal with with his, with his family. And, and I think, you know, the, the stoic and unbelievably um, terrific attitude he's shown for all of it, I think he's, 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 he's a, a great, great guy and he'll be sorely missed as, as a wonderful, wonderful commentator, a unique voice, uh, a fantastic... Um, Fantastic guy to have on your team, and um, you know, 20 years of working with him, I'll really miss him. And uh, I'm sure he'll pop down to, to shows every now and again, and you know, we'll get on the phone. But uh, we'll have to drag him off the golf course because uh, you know that's where he spends most of his time these days. Adam, just finally, uh, September 17th, uh, yeah. in Arlington, Texas, our yeah. very own Liam Smith yeah. uh, will travel over to defend his world title against uh, Canelo. I mean. The fight we look for was Canelo and Golovkin. Now we've got two of our boys fighting them uh, in the same month. But look, look, Cougar, we were looking forward to, to Khan Brook and then Khan fights Canelo. We were looking forward to Golovkin Eubank and then Golovkin fights Brook and then Liam Smith gets this opportunity against Canelo. Look, it's all about opportunities, taking your chances, making different fights and, and also you know, looking after fighters careers you know they're big paydays they're, they're big opportunities on a world stage I think it's terrific I think Liam Smith he's defending his title it's slightly different he's defending his title against Canelo yes he's got to travel yes he's the, the sort of b-side and Canelo's the superstar and all the rest of it you know few will give Liam a chance just like few will give Kel a chance but you never say never in boxing Liam is a very very strong individual you know I know the Smith brothers really well okay and Liam's always been a slightly different one. He's, he's the one that's done his, his, his own thing, you know. I think it's great. He stayed loyal to Frank Warren. He's, he's got a great relationship there. You know, he's, he's got a fantastic opportunity and Frank's delivered for him. Um, you know, he's going out there as the underdog. But, you know, I've spoken to Liam. I think that, you know, he did a lot of training with Amir before the, their fight. And I think that he really fancies this. He feels, obviously, that he's, he's at the right weight. Uh, yes, he may not have the, the experience and, and the skill set that Canelo has, but I think Liam has got, got plenty in there. And I think he's, he's a very difficult fighter to, to get on top of. So it'd be really interesting to see how Canelo deals with him. Yes, as I said, big underdog, but, but I, give him a, I give him a little chance. And I think that, you know, if he goes out there and, and, and puts a great display on, that can only further his career. You know, if he pulls the upset off, unbelievable. But even if he doesn't, he'll put a really good show on. I think he will, Liam. Um, he's that sort of character, and I, and I wish him well. I'm uh, really looking forward to that. Cougar. Right, so roll on Saturday, and then come September, I mean, you know, obviously Kuala Lumpur is as well, uh, September 24th in Manchester. Yeah. And then, like I said, October. Yeah. Uh, plenty of plans for them, haven't been formally announced yet. But I think I think this, this show's a great one to, to sort of finish on, and we have our traditional sort of August, August break. Um, which is a good chance for, for our team, for Matchroom, for everyone to sort of, you know, recharge the batteries and get ready for a, a huge autumn period. Because I think, yeah, September's going to be really exciting. Golovkin Brook cannot wait for another stack pack night on the, uh, the O2, which is such a great venue now for boxing. And then we're in Manchester for for, for Crawler Linares, which is which is huge, a huge fight on Sky Sports. And again, a, a big undercard on that. We've got October the 1st, we've got Bramer and Cleverly, a fight that should have been been made a few years ago. Uh, we all remember what happened there when Tony Bellew came down and then you know Cleverly ended up fighting another guy and it was all it was all a bit chaotic that week. But ultimately Bramer and Cleverly are gonna get back together. And uh, looking forward to that October the 1st. I think we're uh, in Liverpool with Tony Bellew in October. I'm sure Ricky Burns will fight again uh, in the autumn. And then Kalia Fai, October 22nd, I think it is, in Birmingham. And then we've got November and December. I think they look, we're looking at possibly getting White and Chisora together if White comes through against Allen. Listen, it's all up in the air, isn't it? But there's great times ahead. Anthony Joshua, I had a, uh, a good meeting with him the other week uh, before he went off on holiday. And, He's in really good spirits. I think he's 
He's, uh, he needs the break. I think he's had a lot of training camps. I think he's really excited about getting back November or December time. Um, who will he fight? Will he fight? I wanted him to fight Joseph Parker. It looks like Parker has got another fight in the meantime. I Parker think that fighting Dimitrenko. Sounds like that's yeah. happening. It sounds like that we won't get uh, AJ and Parker in the ring until probably early 2017. But that will leave the likes of Stavern or Pulev or someone like that. I think it's going to be a really good test for him uh, before Christmas. Um, but yeah, I think that AJ needs a break, but um, we can't wait to see him back. I think you know, the autumn winter period will be uh, will be huge uh, for British boxing. You know, if Carl Frampton can uh, can can pull off the win in, in this weekend over in New York as well, I don't know how many champions we've got. Has it 13, 14, 9, 14 maybe? It's it's fantastic world champions in Britain. It's a great place to be British boxing, and uh, we look forward to a terrific autumn after uh, after this night, uh, Cougar, which is going to be um, going to be. It's going to be hectic, isn't it? It's a lot of fights on the bill. 15, I believe. So. We're, we're, we're streaming on SkySports.com, uh, the Ryan Burnett fight and the Gamalia fight, uh, Josh Whale clash, which is a really good fight. And they were going live with uh, Tyrone Nurse. We've got the heavyweights, Luke Campbell and uh, Josh Warrington, obviously, to finish with. So it's a, uh, a great night of boxing uh, before uh, we have a little rest in August. Look forward to it. All right, Adam Smith, thank you very much to all to uh, IFL TV, and uh, I'm sure we'll catch up with you soon. Anyway, looking forward to Saturday. Cheers, Keegan. Thank you very much.